So George comes on. He he lights up with Takashi with the six nine. That goes well. And then is it kind of like, hey, let's kind of bring him back one more time and one more time, and then becomes a regular. Like- Slowly but surely, he he start he started being on more and more ep- uh, episodes. And then I remember uh, Logan wanted to uh, extend. Uh, revenue share basically with him at one point which which we did and he became a a partner in the show basically got it okay yep, yep. and then how long did that go with uh, george being on and the three of you he was there do you have the episode number for that that six nine episode 215 two so he was there from 215 probably until about 360 or oh, just, 370 and- he was there for a long time george make no mistake george was a a, a, a has staple. a big part of the show is a it. staple of the show and, and easily the the biggest uh three slot we've had mm-hmm. um uh definitely the audience favorite th- three slot we've ever had potentially the audience favorite in general to be honest with you at, at certain points at yeah. least um and Why so yeah he's the show. loved him so much you know he um it's weird i think i think george kind of um prefaced a wave of uh, conservatism, traditionality, and religion that that he he kind of predated a little bit. I mean, if you go back to the to the six nine episode, that was well before there was a red pill push. That was well well before Tate had really started to, you know, explode. Um, and and I mean, yeah, back in in twenty twenty. And so I think I think there was already an appetite for that type of traditionality mindset and that return to conservatism. And he was he was kind of hitting that audience. And, um, you know, I think I think as far as viewpoints are concerned, I'm in the middle of, of George and Logan. And that's not to say Logan's a, li- a liberal, but he's he's the youngest of the three of us. He was raised in a in a uh, not not his household because in his household would be in Ohio would have been very conservative. Mm-hmm. But the way that he's been he's grown up in front of the camera, he's been around a lot of, you know, showbiz, Hollywood, PR people, as we discussed earlier. And I, I think that potentially could have you know, swayed some of his, his viewpoints uh, to where they were at that time. Cause they're really not there anymore. I think, I think we've, he has, and I have both probably moved a little bit over the past couple of years. What, what caused that? I think living, I think living, I think um, as they say, you know, uh, the youth votes left and, and, and as you, as you age up, you start to yearn for that conventionality and that, and that conservatism uh, that, that you, that you, uh, remember from and, and are attached to from the days of old, right? And you're like, damn, it wasn't always fucking like this. Mm-hmm. It wasn't always like this. And young young kids want progression. They want, how far can we take this thing, dude? Like, well, where can this go? And as you get older, you're like, damn, man, I remember a day where, where you know, you would you would see your neighbors out and you would say what's up and you'd spend time with them and 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 the family unit was protected and and you know all the other things that we're talking about now. And so I think I think George was was actually on the forefront of that a little bit. And I think the audience resonated with that. So uh, the falling out with, with, with George, because uh, when I, when I watched that uh, first time, I'm like, are these guys falling? Like maybe, and, and I think it was like, Oh, they're falling for it. Even though, you know, PVD podcast and other podcasts is falling for this. There's not really, and I'm like, maybe, maybe there's not really anything. Maybe there's like a little bit of a, you know, uh, what do you call it? Like a, unscripted drama right yeah, yeah. kind of like and that i mean obviously that's effective kim kardashian build a whole bl- brand uh keeping up with kardashians and who knows what percentage of that is effective so one time it's my birthday and i'm sitting here doing a podcast and then these guys decide it's a phenomenal idea to start a fist fight and fight each other i have no idea what's going on so they start cursing each other out you're full of shit and raising their voices i'm like wait 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 what the hell is going on here this lasted for about seven minutes, by the way, right? Yeah, it's believable. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. I'll, punch you. Watch this. I'll punch you in your face right now. Step outside right now. Hold me back, Mike. Step outside. Wait, right is this out. real? Yeah, yeah. I'll punch him in his face. So, anyway, it was your birthday. It was my birthday. Like, oh, I had to. Okay. I was right. like, you know what? I'll meet you I outside. Kelly I walked cake. outside. I, said, I got what's going on. I came here. back in with a cake. Oh, that's nice. But I'm so so wait, don't mess with him. He's from New Britain, bro. I'm from Yonkers, but I grew up in New Britain. So nobody is scared of Connecticut. Oh, 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 really? Yo, now we're gonna beat your Mike together. I got, yes. I'm going to be honest Two with you. Connecticut guys. He's, I mean, he's right. Okay. I'm Thank a woman. No <laughs> no <laughs> you're from Connecticut, <laughs> bro. So, bro, you're so, from... So anyways, going back to George. So what what happened? Because you're... Is it... Are you even involved in this? Or is this like, shit, you're in the middle and two friends who are going prior to you, they're going at it and you're kind of trying to be the mediator. 
What did you see? What evolved to this? Obviously, I've seen some of it, but how did it get to the point of saying, you're fired, you're out, we're moving on? Um, I think you saw that. I think you saw where I was just by way of what was televised. I mean, I, I 100% was a, was a bridge and trying to be a mediator in the situation. Um, I think that there, there was, as I mentioned earlier in, in what George kind of stands for, that, that is so uh, ingrained in his being it is so innate and and real and authentic in him that it is it is his life's purpose to push the work of the Lord to uh, push the ideas of of um, conservative conservatism and traditionality and family unit and 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 monogamy, um, which is incredible. But but I think that I think that that's not to say that those values are not important to Logan or to me. But that's not necessarily what that show is about, if that makes sense. It's it's an entertainment podcast. We have guests on. I, I asked Rick Ross today before I came here. We had Rick Ross on the show. We were supposed to have Johnny Manziel on as well today. I asked Rick Ross um, if he was interested in being cryogenically frozen, which I would like to talk to you guys about as well. There's no, there's not, you know, we're not asking him like, you know, when did you decide that this person, you know, when did your relationship with Jesus reach this point? That stuff's incredible and so important and so impactful. And the fact that George has devoted his life to doing that stuff is incredible. But it it, it was it was slightly disjointed from the more um, from the more jovial style of the show. And I think I think that that and by the way, this is just one part of it. It's pretty it's pretty complicated scenario. But I think that that kind of um, I think it really. Or, uh, uh, mess with George even more because he, because he wants to, he want he knows that he should be doing that stuff, talking about that stuff, prioritizing that stuff, and the fact that this wasn't a an environment that was conducive to those type of conversations, I think was was an unattractive uh, situation for him. So let me let me ask this question, Do you, like uh, because you know uh, for somebody that watches a show or consumes a show, you're kind of like okay, do those guys are. There's an element, it fits. It's working out our podcast. There's some days I do one-on-one, great, some like that. But there's our group that likes home team podcasts. And it's just us talking about e- events, views, what's going on, current event, this, what about this? And we do business, politics, me, Vinny, Tom, you know, and Adam, Adam and Tom. And, you know, Tom will take up that entire space with notes and he'll literally he'll come and prepare dream. hours. <laughs> Charts. But, you know, it, it's different. So for, for the audience, the audience watches and say, you know, each person played the role, okay? Maybe you were the point guard. Maybe Logan's the scorer. He's a two, but he's the guy that's driving the eyeball. So if he's playing Michael, you're playing point, you know, whatever. And he's playing third. And, you know, still, it's a team that's working out. Do you think Do you think the whole process could have been handled in a different way for it to either end or for it to continue? Because based on what you're saying, it's fair to say, look, this is what we're talking about. George has a certain set of values and principles that's so core to him. He's not going to change. We can't change him. He can't change us. Best bet is here's what we're doing, right? We're going to go part ways. But do you think there's a different way you guys could have gone about wrapping up the relationship? In hindsight, everything can be done differently. Every There could be a little tweak here. There could be a little tweak there. Um, he had already started his his own show, which as you all know, is, has become extremely successful. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there were conversations that happened that were, that were in my eyes, looking back, they could have been done a lot better. There were, there were conversations that involved religion. There were conversations that involved, um, you know, George's feelings and George's sentiment towards, uh, how he was being treated by guests that were on our show. Um, that were that potentially could have been overlooked. Um, I, I, I'll just say this for myself. I oh, I, I really did from the bottom of my heart try the hardest that I possibly could to to to. When I saw things start to go off the rails, um, a, a little bit from both sides, to try to steer it back on track. Um, I mean, you can you can simply just watch the episodes and you'll see me putting my hand up like, yo don't you know like this is going too far like he's pissed off by the way he has a reason to be so like i did that the whole time and did the same thing behind the scenes um and so i can only speak for myself i'm 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 39 years old 
Um, I've been through a lot of shit in my life, and I like to believe that the way that I handle relationships, the respect that I have for people, the empathy that I have for people, the care that I take in every single interaction um, that I have in this world, I feel fantastic about the way that I did in the, in the situation. Um, I ran into George the other day. I know you probably weren't going to say it because it was- I'm not going to say it. You, you could yeah. say it. I'm not going to So I texted you about it, um, obviously. Um, it was the first time I'd seen him since everything had happened. Um, I was on a plane down here, and I was sitting in my seat and you know, texting, and I look up, and there he is. What are the chances? There what? he is. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Getting on the plane. On the way to Miami. On the way to Miami. Well, I mean, that's- <laughs> Who's not coming to Miami this time? But I, but I tell you, though, it's not. Listen, like, there's a lot of people I've done business with for the last yeah. 20 years, and I've not ran, ran into them at the airport, you know. So it's, it's pretty random. For I it knew it was going to happen. Eventually. I, yeah, yeah. I, it's, it, it was serendipitous, and I knew it was going to happen. He was with Belle, um, who, who they just got engaged, I'm sure mm -hmm, you know, and mm -hmm. incredible. Um, and, and honestly. Super sweet girl. I mean, you can tell they're in love. The. <laughs> They are both incredible people. George is George is an incredible person. He is he, th those values I talked about before. Those are not teachable values. Those are ingrained in his soul and his heart. He is a beautiful human, and Bell is a, is a is a um, a perfect mesh for him. Like like talk about a couple that I knew that we all knew this was going to happen, and um and so I see him on the plane with with Bell in tow, and uh, and. You know, I think he didn't really know what to say. And I, I just I was just in shock. So I just I did the only thing that felt natural to me, which was I stood up and I put my hand out. You know, and I just put my hand out and he shook my hand and we smiled at each other. And it was it was like nothing had ever happened. And and sometimes you have uh, um, disagreements. Sometimes you have falling out. Sometimes you have business issues. Um by the way, like I haven't covered all the factors. Some of it we still don't talk about very publicly on, on both sides. Um, but sometimes you have those issues with people and the only cure, and this is so hard for a lot of people to hear when they're in these scenarios, is time. Everybody wants things to be solved now because it's uncomfortable for them. Nobody wants to feel like someone's mad at them. I would hate to piss you off on the show, any of you guys. I would leave here and I'd be like, damn it, dude. Like, What can I do to fix this? What can I do to fix this? And as you age and you, you gain wisdom and experience in how the world works, a lot of times you realize that time is the only thing that's going to fix something. There's no solve that can be taken right now. So this flight was from L.A. to Miami? Yeah, yeah. So that's a five-hour flight. Yeah. Okay, I don't know how far you guys were sitting from each other. Well, that was another complicated situation. <laughs> okay. So but, uh, let me... I'll, I, well, like, I mean, what, what, I, what I'm suggesting is the fact you're that... Like, it's not, you're I, like, I wasn't yeah. was 2B, yeah. I wasn't 2Z. But like, you have five and a half hours to think, oh shit, is this guy... I, 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 I talk, like, you didn't talk to him during the flight after the flight you get out you're you're checking luggage like walk us like the story doesn't end hey saying hi oh oh yeah okay so 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 jo when george flies he flies a group of people with him his 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 people because it's how he is he flies with his people um i was i was in first class okay that's my guy okay but but now george can obviously afford to go in first class but he's, he's flying with a group of people yeah of course of people and he probably i don't know maybe he can afford to do that maybe he just doesn't want to when he flies economy but like Talk about like a shitty situation for me to like start off the interaction like an asshole. Like we're having this quick conversation and then yeah. it, like I'm like, oh, I got to sit back down here. And I don't know. It just felt like rich people fucking rich people kind of have like a like not rich people, but like people that are in a a situation of class that is over someone else you get looked at we like it's just a weird scenario like i wish i was just sitting somewhere near him and it would have been a little bit i don't know it just was weird okay to like be back there and then to like say okay like i'll be up here like eating these fucking mixed nuts <laughs> well listen uh, i don't some, know sometimes it's roasted. Roasted. sometimes roasted. Yeah, roasted nuts. when we're not flying private with pbd you know, PBD's in 1A. Vinny and I are sharing a seat next to a fat person. Wait, is that? In 27C and D's. So, oh, we sleep on other okay, people's shoulders. So, you know, sometimes we're flying private, sometimes we're flying spirit. You kind of can't get too yes. comfortable, Mike. <laughs> Although spirit's about to go out of business. <laughs> yeah, they because are. Because a judge denied the, them being bought by JetBlue, but that's a different story. Oh, yeah, the merger, yeah, right? Yeah. So, it, I don't know. And, and what I was getting at with that is it was just a weird dynamic. And, and he, see, he's like humble and flies with his crew. Yeah. I, I'm like, dude, I'm 6'3". I need the fucking room. My videographer's in the back. Shit, if I could put my girl in the back. Like, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> nah, but but um, okay. So when the flight, when you say, yeah, when the so, the over. Flight so, so the flight, so the flight lands. We get off and we have this, we have this conversation, and it it, it literally was like nothing had changed. I mean, it was, yo, congr- I just want to tell you guys congratulations, and and um, he uh he's got big plans for the show, and and um, you know, I told him, dude, congratulations on the Tate shows, like like, dude, you you, I said you have what I think a lot of people consider to be one of the more preeminent. Tate interviews you know what I'm saying the way that he was able to humanize push back on them ask hard questions I know you you also did a, obviously a fantastic job with that with that um beast of of an interview and um you know he 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 told me that he's just in a in a better place now he's in a better place mentally um he's excited about the future because as we all know uh when you are misaligned with your purpose in life that brings along problems it brings along anxiety it brings along you know lack of confidence it brings along a lot of things that i think he was experiencing Mike, one, one quick follow-up hypothetical let's say you're sitting there you're on the flight and it's you and logan sitting on the flight first class 1a 1b george walks in how would that situation been different Logan would have bought the plane and kicked everybody off. No, so no, so evi- no, so evidently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> hypothetical. Yes, everybody off. Correct. This is a correct. hypothetical. Yes. But Logan's sitting there as well. No, no. So evident and not you know, evidently they're talking too. Okay. Evidently there's their conversations there too, and they've been and they've been you know, exchanging Christmas cards. I will say I didn't get a Christmas card from either of you guys. So that's messed up. Wow, they they both got each other's wow. Christmas cards. So like you know like. It is what it is, but uh, but yeah, like I, I have a feeling that um, it's just one of those situations in life that worked out the way it worked out, and everyone will be better or at the very least different as a result of it. And everything happens for a reason. Yeah, I, know, I like to believe so. So for me, you know, I, I I watched the exchange, you know, where he's like, you know, you says I need a you you said I need a therapist uh, instead of Jesus because Jesus isn't doing it for me or something like that and along is like no that's not what I said here's what I said so tell me why I need a therapist because you know you need to upgrade your life you know uh, what do you mean by that like you need to improve certain what parents emotional intelligence me emotional and then going back and forth and then eventually so of course you you you're against gays you're against women you're zero you're, you're effing scumbag that would support Tate and obviously it was fast emotions are high when this is being said but for me. When I, when I size everybody up, when I size you up, when I size Logan up, and I size George up, I don't know any one of you. Meaning, I've not broken bread with anybody until that day George came here, and after he interviewed me at the cigar lounge we had, then afterwards I took him to the house, and then we were eat- you were there as well. We were yeah. eating, and he was with uh, he was with his crew and his girl. Yeah, and then afterwards we hung out. You know, we, uh, we were at the yeah. house and all this stuff. And then Jennifer's like, you "Gave hey, the truck." Guys, got to go to sleep now. I gave him the truck. So take yeah, the truck. Yeah, he took his truck. Are you serious? Like, <laughs> yeah, he needed a car. Truck, yeah, forget. Yeah. So, anyways, so so that was the experience with George. And then we had him George, George here with uh, uh, Marmar, uh, Marmar the Assyrian, which was very interesting. Different kind of an approach conversation, you know. And then, uh, he, you know, uh, he wanted to get in, get in contact with Tate. I messaged Tate. It's like, absolutely. And I put them in contact together. I thought the guy freaking was unbelievable. By the way, I Russia. tell you, I, I, I said this a, a few podcasts ago, and I told him privately as well, that this guy's this guy not good. This guy, this guy has the, the legs to be really, really good in this space because he can not only draw from a lot of different things, and he actually knows how to hold himself together under pressure and still ask the question and be fair. It's, you know, and the part about uh, uh, the, the different dynamics, then I'll go to Logan. With Logan, when I watch Logan, I think Logan is on a freaking, what do you want to call it? On a jet, you know. Rocket ship. I mean, rocket <laughs> ship is a better one to stardom, you know attention he's getting, you know, wrestling. They're obviously turning him into the next superstar, whoever that's going to be. Is it going to be the next Rock, the next this? If he's constantly winning, they're building the next hero, right, into whoever. He's going to be a phenomenon in that area and soon to be a billionaire with his drink with KSI. They're doing a billion, two billion a year, whatever they're doing. Prime is everywhere, UFC. Um, and, and when you're that young, young, going at the pace that you're going, you're going to break a lot of things, and there's not really a full-blown manual because one manual, again – 
when I'm sizing him up, I've never spoken to Logan. This is your friend. You know I've never spoken to him. Yep. We've never had an exchange. But when you're going that fast, you got your manager, you got your PR, you got all these people trying to tell you what to do, and then you're trying to tell everybody to shut up, let me do what I want to do, but then if I say this and it's really what I say, I may lose this deal and lose that deal, and what about this and what about that, and there's this much money sitting on the table, and those guys told me to be careful of this because you don't want to piss those guys off because they may buy this. There's so much noise. It is so noisy where he's at in here that there's nobody that knows that but probably him and guys that came before him. So maybe a rock, you know, maybe a, you know, not that many guys. It's only going to be like 10 people that he can go yeah. to talk to that yeah. are going to understand where he's at. Now, Very having, few people. Having said that, having said that at the same time, uh, when you're, when you're a, a God-fearing, God-loving man, and you live your life the way George is living, you have grace. And, and grace means you're going to go, God's going to bless you. He's had an incredible life. And by the way, the, the job he did with the interview, he's got some 330,000 subs in, in a month, yep. his YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. There's guys that do that for 10 years <laughs> and they don't get to 30. He did 330 in a single month. And you know, you know, I know what it is to sit in the back of a plane and go with a crew of 10 people. You're trying to save money because it's like instead of buying a flight, 1500 no, bucks, and you're doing that. We've all been there before yeah, when you're yeah. doing that. But this guy's going to make a lot of money. Uh, uh, God willing, he's going to be a great father. He's going to be a, a great husband. He's going that route. And I think in, in Logan's ear, when you're by yourself alone, again, my opinion, and I'm very comfortable being wrong for the rest of my life. I'm very comfortable being wrong. It's very hard to find Jenkos in your life as a friend. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's so hard to find a Jenko because the guy literally wants nothing from you. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm trying to, you know, and, and the Jenkos, it, we all need, you, you know, everybody in life, there's certain people like you find it, you know, you know, when we're younger and we're dating a girl and like that could have been the one, but you effed up, you screwed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all got that, right? You know, you're younger, you got a friend like, ah, oh, fuck. You, you, you know, you had like a mentor, like, oh, dude, that. And, and then eventually like, dude, I'm not doing this again. I want that friend in my life. I will never F this one up. That girl, I'm not going to F this one up. I want that guy in my life to give me counsel. I'm always going to protect this. And I'm going to fear the man upstairs if I fear God because all of this stuff can be taken away from me because I lost it all early. And I want that grace. I feel that level of wisdom, wisdom, kindness, energy uh, with him. I think he's a star, but I think he's about to be a superstar. I think he's going to be, I think 2024 he's going to have a good year, but I think 2025 for, for Jenko is going to be skyrocketing so if you like this clip and you want to watch another one click right here and if you want to watch the entire podcast click right here